Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about audio warping and audio quantizing. Now, I've gone ahead and brought in two loops to our existing project. One thing I want you to notice is that this loop is playing back at 122 BPM. It actually says it on the name. If you're looking here where it says 126, ignore this for now. That's something that I'm going to get into in a moment. So this loop is playing back at 122 BPM beats per minute. However, our project tempo is 126 beats per minute. And therefore, you can see that the end point of this audio file is slightly after where the end point should be, which should be on bar 11. However, if this was playing back slightly quicker, so if we sped up its tempo from 122 to 126, it would in fact bring this end point back to here. This is what we want to achieve. So the purpose of doing this is that you can bring in any audio file you like and you can change the tempo to make it conform to the tempo of your current project. Meaning no matter what tempo you're working in, whether it's 170 BPM, 128, 110, you can bring any audio file you like and you can time stretch it to make it fit in the tempo of your track. Super cool. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, you need the audio editor open. If it's not open, all you've got to do is double click on the audio file. Then we need to activate warp mode. So I'm going to click here and it will activate warp mode. Without warp mode, Ableton won't allow you to stretch or compress the length of the audio file. Now, what this segment BPM is, is the BPM that Ableton thinks that audio file is at natively. Now we know from looking at the name of this audio file, because most sample packs, they have named their loops with the BPM number. So we know that it's 122 BPM. So if in this segment BPM box, I was to move this to 122, Look at what happened to the actual waveform. It now ends perfectly where bar 11 is. So it actually compressed the audio wave to conform to our tempo. Watch once more. I'm going to undo. That's 126. As I move this down to 122, it brings it back to be in time with our project. Now, there's actually an even easier way to do this. If you hover your mouse over to the right edge and you hold shift and then you click and drag, it will actually stretch the waveform or compress it. And if you look, it's moved it to 122.02, probably because it's not exactly 100% perfect, but pretty much there. Now listen to the difference and how it sounds like this and how it sounds before. So when it's in time with our project, it sounds like this. If I undo the time stretching, I put it back to here. This is what it was sounding like before. If you listened closely, the chord that comes in here and the chord that comes in here really felt like they were very delayed. Like the beat came in and the chord came in after. Okay, so I'm going to hold shift, click and drag this back, and we have warped the loop to fit with our tempo. Fantastic. Now, let me go into audio quantizing. Quantizing is similar in the sense that we move around part of the waveform. However, we move around part of the waveform to make sure that all of the transients are playing not in time with our tempo per se, but perfectly in line with our grid markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute this track and I'll solo it just so you can hear what it's actually doing. It's just, it's just a drum loop. That's all it is. So once again, on the actual audio file, warp is already enabled. 
what I want you to notice is these warp markers. See, right now, on some of the prominent drum hits, they're slightly out of time with the grid. So you see, this is the beginning of bar two. However, the kick drum comes in a little bit before, and this is going to cause quite significant problems if you've got other percussive elements playing alongside it. So I've got a drum kit that I made here using a drum rack in one of the previous videos, and I'm going to play both of them together. And I want you to hear what is called flaming, which is when you've got two drum hits playing slightly out of time with each other, it just doesn't sound very pleasing. Did you hear that? There was a little bit of flaming occurring. Now, the volume of this is quite a lot louder than the actual drum rap. So I'm going to turn it down to even them a little bit more. Listen to it once more. There you go. Towards the end, it got really bad. So when we quantize audio, we're able to take all of these drum hits and put them in time with our grid. So the first thing you need to understand is what these warp markers are. Ableton automatically places warp markers when you turn on warp mode. And it places warp markers where it sees the beginning of some sort of hit. So this is known as a transient. So the beginning of this kick hit is known as a transient. This is known as a transient. This would be a transient here. And you can see there's warp markers everywhere. Now we could manually go in, turn the warp markers on, and move them to wherever we want to move them to. But we could also, with essentially one click of a button, get Ableton to do all the work for us. So what we want to do is we would essentially want to move all of these markers to the nearest grid line. Some are absolutely fine. They're perfectly on the grid, and some aren't. So you can do this by right-clicking, going up to Quantize. This might not work straight out of the box. We may need to select Quantize Settings, but let's give it a go. Quantize, and here you go. It has moved all of the warp markers, turned them on, and move them to the nearest grid line. So if we play this back with our original drums, they're going to sound perfectly in time. Fantastic. Now, let me go through a couple more things. You could manually go and move all of these, double clicking to activate it, moving it around. But you see how, unless there's other ones activated, when I move this, it moves everything to the left and everything to the right the same amount. The way to prevent this from happening is activate the one you want to move and also activate the ones to the side of that. You can do that by double clicking on each one individually or holding down command on a Mac keyboard. When you hover over, it highlights all three. You double click and all three are turned on straight away. Then I can move the middle one and the rest of the waveform will stay exactly where it is. The next thing I want to talk about is Quantize Settings. Quantize Settings allows you to determine where it will move all of these warp markers. Of course, unless you manually move them, that's separate. So on Quantize 2, I can select Current Grid, which means when I press OK, it will quantize them to the nearest visible grid markers. If I was to zoom in, we get more grid markers which become visible to us, and then it would move them to again, the nearest visible one. So now this would move to whichever the nearest visible grid marker is. Same with this and so on. If you want to select specifically the distance at which it moves the warp markers, regardless of your zoom level, you click here and you select whether it moves them to the nearest quarter, to the nearest eighth note, to the nearest eighth note triplet, and so on and so forth. Usually, current grid is fine. Zoom all the way out, quantize. If it doesn't work, zoom in a little, try current grid again, quantize again, and see if that's a little bit better. So by doing this now, I have created, from what I can see so far, a couple of problems for myself. If you look here, this is a prominent kick drum, and it's playing a tiny bit, I believe it's 1 16th 
after where it should be playing, which is on the beat. So I would need to then manually go in and move this back to be on the beat. Also, I saw the same thing occur over here. This should occur on bar two, but it's occurring just before bar two. So we need to manually go in and move that as well. So, you know, make sure that no matter what settings you use, you go in and you check it, you listen back to it. And if you need to move some of the warp markers manually, go ahead and do that. One final thing, you may have noticed that this warp marker hasn't been set perfectly to the beginning of the actual drum hit. Sometimes this happens because Ableton doesn't analyze the audio file perfectly. And so you can manually move this. The way you do it is, first of all, you have to deactivate it. Then, if you hover over it and you hold Shift, you can click and drag it to be exactly where the beginning of the hit is. Alternatively, if you've already activated it, you can hold Shift, click, and it will drag the actual waveform, and you can move it again to where the actual warp marker is. And that's the way that you quantize audio. Go ahead, load in some loops on your tracks, try quantizing them, try warping them to fit with the tempo of your project, and hope you have a lot of fun. See you in the next video.